The merchant answered humbly that he had, thanks to his host's kindness. Then the beast warned him to remember their agreement and to prepare his daughter exactly for what she had to expect. Do not get up tomorrow, he added, until you see the sun and hear a golden bell ring. Then you will find your breakfast waiting for you here, and the horse you are to ride will be ready in the courtyard. He will also bring you back again when you come with your daughter a month hence. Farewell. Take a rose to beauty, and remember your promise. The merchant was only too glad. When the beast went away, and though he could not sleep for sadness, he lay down until the sun rose. Then, after a hasty breakfast, he went to gather beauty's rose and mounted his horse, which carried him off so swiftly that in an instant he had lost sight of the palace. And he was still wrapped in gloomy thoughts when it stopped before the door of the cottage. His sons and daughters, who had been very uneasy at his long absence, rushed to meet him. Eager to know the result of his journey, which, seeing him mounted upon a splendid horse and wrapped in a rich mantle. They supposed to be favorable. He hid the truth from them at first, only saying sadly to Beauty as he gave her the rose. Here is what you asked me to bring you, you little know what it has cost. But this excited their curiosity so greatly that presently he told them his adventures from beginning to end, and then they were all very unhappy. The girls lamented loudly over their lost hopes, and the sons declared that their father should not return to this terrible castle, and began to make plans for killing the beast if it should come to fetch him. But he reminded them that he had promised to go back. Then the girls were very angry with Beauty, and said it was all her fault, and that if she had asked for something sensible this would never have happened and complained bitterly that they should have to suffer for her folly. Poor Beauty, much distressed, said to them, I have, indeed, caused this misfortune. But I assure you I did it innocently. Who could have guessed that to ask for a rose in the middle of summer would cause so much misery? But as I did the mischief, it is only just that I should suffer for it. I will therefore go back with my father to keep his promise. At first nobody would hear of this arrangement, and her father and brothers, who loved her dearly, declared that nothing should make them let her go, but beauty was firm. As the time drew near she divided all her little possessions between her sisters and said goodbye to everything she loved, and when the fatal day came she encouraged and cheered. Her father as they mounted together the horse which had brought him back. It seemed to fly rather than gallop, but so smoothly that beauty was not frightened, indeed. She would have enjoyed the journey if she had not feared what might happen to her at the end of it. Her father still tried to persuade her to go back, but in vain. While they were talking the night fell, and then, to their great surprise, wonderful colored lights began to shine in all directions, 
and splendid fireworks blazed out before them. All the forest was illuminated by them, and even felt pleasantly warm. Though it had been bitterly cold before, this lasted until they reached the avenue of orange trees, where were statues holding flaming torches. And when they got nearer to the palace, they saw that it was illuminated from the roof to the ground, and music sounded softly from the courtyard. The beast must be very hungry, said Beauty, trying to laugh. If he makes all this rejoicing over the arrival of his prey, but in spite of her anxiety, she could not help admiring all the wonderful things she saw. The horse stopped at the foot of the flight of steps leading to the terrace, and when they had dismounted, her father led her to the little room he had been in before. Where they found a splendid fire burning, and the table daintily spread with a delicious supper. The merchant knew that this was meant for them and Beauty, who was rather less frightened. She had passed through so many rooms and seen nothing of the beast. Was quite willing to begin, for her long ride had made her very hungry. But they had hardly finished their meal when the noise of the beast's footsteps was heard approaching, and Beauty clung to her father in terror, which became all the greater when she saw how frightened he was. But when the beast really appeared, though she trembled at the sight of him. She made a great effort to hide her terror and saluted him respectfully. This evidently pleased the beast. After looking at her, he said, in a tone that might have struck terror into the boldest heart, though he did not seem to be angry. Good evening, old man. Good evening. Beauty. The merchant was too terrified to reply, but Beauty answered sweetly, "Good evening, Beast. Have you come willingly?" asked the Beast. "Will you be content to stay here when your father goes away?" Beauty answered bravely that she was quite prepared to stay. I am pleased with you," said the beast. "As you have come of your own accord, you may stay. As for you, old man," he added, turning to the merchant. "At sunrise tomorrow, you will take your departure. When the bell rings, get up quickly and eat your breakfast, and you will find the same horse waiting to take you home." But remember that you must never expect to see my palace again. Then, turning to Beauty, he said, "Take your father into the next room, and help him to choose everything you think your brothers and sisters would like to have. You will find two traveling trunks there. Fill them as full as you can." It is only just that you should send them something very precious as a remembrance of yourself.